Hello, and thank you for joining us for our presentation. Today's presentation is get the most out of your social media. Hi, I'm Julie. I'm the Managing Director and Partner at Green Monkey Creative. Today, I am a pleasure to walk you through the getting the most out of your social media today. Gaining brand recognition is one of any business's most important marketing goals. That's because consumers want to buy brands they recognize and relate to. Social media allows you to do this and it's easy and effective for brand building. Social media has a benefit over traditional media because it can get your brand in front of people much more quickly and easily. You have a sale, you can post it up that morning and have your audience engaged. Furthermore, it gets your audience looking at your brand even when they aren't thinking about your brand or product. One tip we have is pay attention to your profile and cover photos. A great way to create brand recognition is to place your logo often yet strategically. You want to make sure that it's not overwhelming or distracting. What is social media? We talk about it all the time, but what, what is the meaning of social media? It's a form of electronic communication, such as websites for social networking and microblogging, through which users create online communities to share information, ideas, personal messages, and other content, such as videos. So always keep that in mind. It's, it's for you to share information, ideas, personal messages, and other content. Yep, social media, it's mostly free. It's one of the cheapest way to market. It's free to create the social media profiles and post organic content. For some, that may be enough and the quality of the content may promote the content on its own. However, if you'd like to go the extra mile and promote it further, paying for a promotion will help increase exposure. You can pay for ads or you can boost your actual posts. There are 45% of the world's population are daily active social media users. So if you're not playing in this playground, what are you waiting for? The uses of social media around the world is ever increasing. It's without a doubt one of the most popular online activities that users engage in. There are 3.5 billion social media users worldwide and this number is only a growing. One of the reasons for this high usage of social media is because mobile possibilities for users are continually improving, which makes it simpler by the day to access social media no matter where you are. You don't have to be sitting at your desk anymore. Most social media networks are also available as mobile apps or have been optimized for mobile browsing, making it easier for users to access their favorite sites while on the go. Why even be social? Is it important to your brand? Social media marketing requires both strategy and creativity. While it may seem overwhelming, its importance cannot be overstated. It's so important that 97% of marketers are using social media and 78% of salespeople outsell their peers by using social media for their business. Think about real estate agents. Where would they be without social media marketing? It's gone from having your ad in a newspaper to now being on the fly, posting the things that you have for sale and the information that you know. Plus, its benefits far exceed beyond increasing sales. However, not all businesses are aware of the benefits of social media marketing. In fact, 50% of small businesses aren't using social media to promote their businesses. And then 25% of those don't plan to use social media in the future either. That is surprising because it's the easiest thing to do once you've got some tools. What are the benefits of social media marketing? You're always going to be growing your brand awareness. It'll make, you easy, make it easy for you to spread the word about your products and your mission and your level of service. Increasing your traffic, you'll be able to use social media to link to your website and your website to social media. You're going to promote your products and services. This is why you ultimately are investing in marketing services. So this is you're going to promote your products and services, you want to increase your traffic, and you want to grow brand awareness. Why is it important? It's valuable for any business 
to finding your customers on social media because it has a direct impact on sales and your bottom line. If you're not connecting with them, someone else is. Nearly 60% of people are more likely to buy from a brand that they follow on social media. It's because they are connected and think of you often so that they will buy from you versus first versus some other business they are not engaged in. So think about that. If you're continually engaged with them and are providing content that is relevant to them and their situation or buying placement, they're going to think of you first. Let's go through some social media tips. Listening. Never stop listening. In the messages that your customers leave you on social media is key for you to listen. Using hashtags to search on the same types of topics. You have to be listening in order to grow. Define your target audience is huge. If you're posting on Snapchat and your and your target audience is 60 plus, you're in the wrong park to be playing. Don't forget that you can't always think about yourself as a business owner. Think of yourself as a customer. Think of yourself as your customer. What would you like to see from you? Reverse the thought process. That'll help you provide the information on social media to engage your audience. Invite your customers that you see face to face on a regular basis to be your first fans. They should be the first ones that should be engaged. Because can you imagine how upset a client would be if you had a sale and they had no idea about it because there was nothing posted in your in your retail or service establishment and you don't send out email campaigns but they're not engaged so make sure that you've got a sign letting everyone know what your handles are to your social media and encouraging them when they're there to sign up because there's ex exclusive offers or coupons or contests online all the time You want to create dialogue with and between your customers. So asking questions, I don't know, what's your favorite sweater today, for example. People will start, they love to talk and communicate and they, it'll build a sense of community along your followers. Respond to all good and bad comments. My rule of thumb is even good ones, you should say thank you, uh, can't wait to see you again. The bad comments, address it, never apologize and take it offline if at all possible. We had one uh, recently with a client that didn't respond to something and the person wrote a, not a very good review, but the service wasn't done yet. So when they went back, the client actually changed the review and actually apologized in their review for leaving an, uh, that initial review. So there is a way to make it better. Sometimes things um, can't be resolved, and, and but at least your audience sees you responding to these comments as well. So that's a responsible thing to do. Be authentic, honest, and transparent. Don't pretend you're something that you're not. Don't promise things that you're not. Just be you and show inside your business and show the honesty and the transparency in your, in your business. Provide value for free. So it can be tips. It can be, um, you know, look at the hairdressers. Tips on how to do your hair, how to do your makeup, how to, how to you know, um, for us, Green Monkey, I do tips all the time on how to improve your marketing for free. I don't ask for anything. I just am putting it out there for hopefully for someone to learn something and become engaged with us. You, you, you can't be boring on social media. You, you need to consistently deliver excitement, surprise, and delight. And it doesn't have to be anything magical, but you do want to have engagement and think about what you like to see on social media as well. You don't want it to be boring. Don't just sell. Um, make it easy and compelling for customers to buy. So if you're just constantly selling, they're not interested because if they want to buy something, they can go to your website directly. So a rule of thumb is out of 10 posts, nine should be other stuff and one should be sales posts. So when you think about that, so you've got your brand story that you can be telling, you've got some quotes you could be sharing, you could have partnerships, you could be sharing uh, testimonials, but only one should be really sales driven. Use social ads, um, promote something, especially when it's a campaign. Um, local business awareness is huge. Make sure you're targeting um, your followers and those in your area as well. 
share your stories. If you're able to share stories about your current clients or something that you went through or or new products and how you came about wanting to carry them or how, you know, if you designed something, what made you want to design this? Get on that platform and it has to be where your audience, back to that conversation about who your target audience is. So, you know, there's Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and Google My Business. I know Google My Business isn't technically a social uh, media platform, but it is very important that the information on these four should be consistent, which I pointed out earlier. But Facebook and Instagram are probably the top two in my mind that you should be on. Twitter and then Google My Business. Um, Twitter people have an issue with, but it's still important for your SEO. There are other social media platforms. There's Snapchat, there's TikTok, there's LinkedIn. But if you're not if you're not targeting an 18 year old or anyone under 18, why would you be on Snapchat or TikTok? Facebook. A lot of people go to your Facebook page for information over your website. It's just the way it's turned out to be. So you've got your shop, which is your website. So Facebook is kind of like having a guy dressed up as a chicken out front waving to customers and handing out flyers. It's a way of drawing people inside your shop and creating some buzz and brand recognition, chatting up people on the street and getting them come inside to like your stuff. So how many times have you been tagged on um, when someone goes, hey, I need uh, the best t-shirt company in town and people start tagging you in that and, and start having that conversation with the original poster and the one that um, tagged your business and say thank you. Uh, it's a great way to interact. It's like a moving, walking, talking newspaper ad that we were never really able to do when it was strictly print. Instagram is a great way to show the little peep into the back of your shop, a little glimpse into your life, your processes, what inspires you, um, what you love and why you love it. And since a picture is worth a thousand words, it can be a way to resonate and connect in a way that other strategies don't. You might not get a lot of comments and engagement uh, with with like the back and forth on Instagram, but you get the quick love and liking. Like it, it is so quick that people are going through their feed and their stories. So make it easy for them to be quick and to the point to connect with you. So there's Instagram and Facebook stories, and I and I think sometimes businesses avoid this, um, and I and I think you have to look at it because you can create these special moments off the fly, like if you're at an event. So marketing products and services is one of the top benefits for social media for small business owners. The other benefit of social media is building a sense of community with customers and the prospective customers. Stories are a great way to a great opportunity to share your company's more human side and allow for customers to build a sense of loyalty to your company while amplifying your brand awareness. And they last for 24 hours. So it's quick, it's it's dirty, it's neat, it's 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 attention span is, you know, you're click, click, click through these stories. The consumers need to see relevant content and if you want positive engagement, you better deliver it. Stories are a great way to show unique aspects of your brand while also showing off your expertise. You're able to talk if you post a video in your story. You can use calls to action to drive engagement by asking questions or polls. Imagine if you had a sale and you're walking in and it's in your story and you're showing going into the store and all the the activity going on. It's important not to overuse stories. Create them for what they were meant to be. It'll go for a long way than using them for something else. Quick sound bites and videos showing off product that you may be unboxing and things like this are good and exciting. Um, attention grabbers and it's a great way to tag other brands so if you're opening a product that you're carrying in your store you can tag the brand and they're gonna show it in their story and share it's just an easy way to get the word out there and get your brand awareness you can also show your company culture which is amazing for a small business because sometimes we oversee that and think we have to play with the big guys but you have an opportunity here on social media to really show your company culture as a small business your, your websites depict your business's desired persona. However, stories give your potential clients and potential talent a far better idea of what they can expect when working with or for you um, as a company. There is nothing more powerful than fans sharing authentic love for your brand and referring to others. Example is scheduling a fan takeover. 
for a day at a time where curated fans get to tell their story and why they love your business. It's an amazing way to get out the brand um, raw, raw of your customers. And so potential customers can hear um, how wonderful you are. Using questions and pulling for feedback. Don't wait for reviews on other pages, though of course you need to encourage reviews to learn about your customers. Go after those answers. People love to give their opinions. Lots of those little surveys and stories. Um, you can do polls, you can ask questions. Um, there's a great museum in our local area that does uh, question and answer. Um, Canva does it as well, where they'll be uh, asked these question and answer and it has people engaged. So you need to start featuring people in emotional moments and short content. And some of these story tips that I have for you can really apply to your posts as well. But you've, you've got to find that happy medium. So everyone loves a good report on Instagram stories or Facebook stories. And you can exploit this new update by piggybacking on the following of your best customers and consumers. Reach out to those who shop your product online or frequent your store and ask if you can repost their content or send them additional products and services. I watch a winery do it all the time. People tag them and they share those continually and thank them for sharing these posts. So then people see that. So when they're there, it gets in, it creates a habit where people want to be featured and they want to be part of what you're sharing and part of your world. Everyone likes to feel like an online star. So imagine people going, look, oh my goodness, like my, my post got published by so-and-so. People like that. They like the recognition. We're all human and we're all drawn in by authenticity and real stories that convey emotion. Examples can be you're showing moments with your team or you're volunteering in your community, your product or service and the real impact it has in people's lives. Remember community. It can't always be about what you're selling. You have to show your side of community and corporate social responsibility. Share your customers' stories, whether they're sharing their experiences. Showcase short stories that convey your values and elicit emotion and watch your engagement grow. The best way to use stories is to create short, meaningful content around your message. People want to see your problem, what your, what your product tackles, and the solution. You can use stories to create informative tutorials for your product or for recipes. You can use it to break news about new products and services you can offer. And you can do behind the scenes feature for your business as well. It's, it's endless of the opportunities that you can do in your Instagram and Facebook stories. And the nice thing too is that you can, if you post a story on Instagram, it can directly go to your Facebook stories. So that's, that's a fantastic opportunity to kill two birds with one stone. Be unique and show these experiences. So I like to try to think of a unique way of taking advantage of Instagram and Facebook stories. It could be telling stories of how your service saves someone or making short films using your product or interviewing people on the street to get their thoughts on what you do. Um, imagine telling that story. If you're offering a service that provides a solution for someone, you, want, you, you can always tell people, but at least showing them this opportunity for you to show them what it does. Think outside the box and you may just strike gold. Not every shoe fits everybody. So you have to create your brand strategy that fits with you, but there's other ways to try things. And if it works, then keep doing that. Social media story features are really designed to offer a peek into the action. So it's really important to actually showcase something fun Stories that capture a special or exciting experience provide real insight into what your company or brand is from the point of view of an employee or a customer. Don't always show it from the perspective of your brand. You can't do that on other formats and you can't communicate it. You can't do that in a newspaper ad. You can't do that in a radio ad. You can't do that in many other magazine. Social media is where you can do that. Twitter. I do have a lot of clients that don't like Twitter, but Twitter is very important for SEO and, 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 and the communication there is different because people are instantly retweeting or commenting on your tweets. So Twitter is kind of like hanging out at the local pub with all your favorite customers and your supportive friends and fellow business owners. And you might catch up with a customer, share some ideas or tips with another biz. There might be something in the news that's relative to your business. 
there might be something in the news that you feel obligated to share, but be careful of political because it can turn into wildfire. You, it's, it's able for you to, you know, answer a question for someone in the community or maybe just sit back and listen. You can listen and see what's going on in, in your area of expertise. Like I said, Google My Business isn't technically a social media platform, but it is key next to your website. I would put website, Google My Business, then your social media in that order. When people use Google for services in their local area, they are presented with a list of local businesses. It is so valuable to have your business there. And the more that you interact, Google's job is to showcase the best. And, and, and I don't mean the ads the first few at the top. Google's job is to show you the most relevant results based on your search. So if you don't have those keywords on your website, social media, and everywhere else you are on the web, you're not going to come up because Google has a job to do to show the most relevant. So ensure that you do that. Um, paying for SEO services is highly recommended, but you want to ensure that all the information that you have is on your website and it's all the relevant keywords um, and listing your products and services so people are able to find you. It's like putting a add in yellow pages that's blank and it's not even in the right category. So you have to ensure your Google My Business is up to date. Optimizing your Facebook page. Ensure your cover image is your logo. So your little profile picture, we have the monkey there. Um, select the page call to action. So send us a message. That's what our call to action, we're not selling a product on our page. We wanna have a send a message to interact with someone. A great cover photo makes a great intro into your business page. As you see, we have some of our uh, highlights of our logo in there um, very differently. Um, but it's a great way to intro your business. Change your cover photo seasonally if you want. Um, you can use a video as your cover photo, which is also enticing. Ensure your username, uh, as you'll see, it says at Green Monkey Creative. So when people are searching us or tagging us, we're going to come up. Always complete your description field and ensure all information is up to date, including your website link. Ensure it represents your brand and business, your business contact details, other social media accounts, a brief list of your products, your professional awards, your business story. Tell your founder's story. Make sure your business story is absolutely complete. It should be complete here. It should be complete on Instagram. It should be complete on Google My Business. The more original text you have here, the more opportunities you get to rank your page for business-related search queries. So always remember that. Pay attention to your profiles and cover photos. This is a great way to create a brand recognition. You want to make sure that it's not overwhelming and distracting. And you want to make sure that your logo stays in that spot, that that's your photo that stays there. The template. So Facebook does have templates. So in this instant, you can optimize a page that's more suited to your business. If you're a service business, which we are, if you're a restaurant and cafe, you'll be able to highlight photos and important info about your menu, hours and location, actually upload your menu on there, which is a great way. You just have to make sure that it's always up to date. You can do it on Google My Business too. It's just an extension of your website and getting information out there. Instagram. It's very important to create an Instagram profile that successfully captures the attention of the target audience members. Ensure that you have a business account. When you set up an account, it typically sets it up as a personal account. You have to convert it to a business account. Upload images and designs, design posts that fit your brand. Focus on the quality of followers rather than quantity because they're everywhere. There are people that you can just like, but you want to like back. Um, they're in the same area. If they're competitors, you can still like each other's stuff. Uh, if you're in the same field, um, you know, just when you're following personal accounts, please keep in mind that if it says requested, they do have a private account. So I suggest that you don't um, initiate those. Um, you undo that follow. So ensure your dates, your details are up to date and include services and location. Ensure your handle is appropriate. And I know it's getting harder and harder, but if you have the same handle name here and on Facebook, Twitter, it's harder, um, then it makes it very easy for people to follow you. And ensure your Instagram and Facebook pages are linked for either sharing and going back because then it, when you're on your Facebook page, you can see your Instagram page. You're not going to figure this out 
and you're going to evolve and that's the great thing it's lessons learned based on information that you're doing so social media is a great way to engage with your current and potential customers spreading more awareness about your services and creating brand loyalty among customers by reinforcing what makes your business unique you need to engage with your audience when they comment on your social media messages make sure that they feel there's a person behind the brand ensuring they don't feel like they're talking to a robot or you don't care get those conversations you're looking for and the and look at the conversations that you're having because then maybe that gives you an idea for another strategy to post on social media if you're answering the same types of questions. Add call to actions to motivate your customers to do something. Empower them to purchase your product or service. Make them feel connected and engaged. Hold a contest. No business really wants to give things away for free, but they are extremely successful. This helps spread the word about businesses and content. When I my recommend, recommendation to some of my clients is um, give away something that doesn't cost anything to you. So if it's a service, so it's time, even though you know you do your time does come with a cost, but that's something that um, you can give away for free. Like when we give away free hour consultation, it's it's the same thing. I'm giving that information so that you learn more about me and you get excited about what I'm offering. Hopefully. So what's your strategy? You want to write relevant posts that people that you want your customers to respond to and want to engage. You want to have conversation starters that are relevant, personalized, and something a majority of your customers would enjoy discussing. Keep the conversation going and interact with with responses. Post pictures. Your business should be showcasing the work that is most proud of. If you've got new inventory in your store, show that display. Pictures are more engaging than text, rather than po like text. Um, in fact, it's 120% more. So using your own photos can provide an outlet to show what you do, but mind you, keep it with your brand and use the same filters um, to keep it consistent. Treat your social media as a mini website or similar to a blog that no one seems to have time to write. When customers arrive to your platforms, they should be able to find out everything about you. Make sure everything is optimized and all the information is correct and with as much information as possible. Chances are people are visiting you regularly through social versus your website or website versus your social. Contests. Like I said, people love free stuff. Um, they will love the ease of being able to enter and receive promotion through social media. It kind of shows you care and that you want to have a little bit of fun. So if your area of business would benefit from this i would totally recommend it do a like share and win provide exclusive deals customers love like they're getting something in return for being a loyal fan and i'm going to hit on this point that if your customers in person are not on your social media and being able to take a care take advantage of these exclusive deals then you have a problem because i would be upset as a client if i found out there was exclusive deals but i wasn't following you so it enticed me to get on those and follow you to stay up to date Remember to have your clients on your social um, at any cost. I, I think I can't resonate that one any stronger. So if you have social media contests or ads or deals, it will entice people to follow your page more closely and will likely tell their friends when they do score an exclusive deal. Target some ads. Use social media ads to their full ability through targeting. Target people in your area or those who like related pages. Boost your page locally. Be fun. Be quirky. Users enjoy fun and quirky posts and additional just to product or service related posts. Remember that it's a social media platform so you have to remain social. A feel good or funny post can engage customers. Those quotes that everyone likes to share, they stick around. So remember, Rule of thumb, out of 10 posts, only one should be a sales type post. The rest should be communication, emotion, and social. Hashtags are crucial for any business. You can follow based on hashtags. Hashtags are a great way to build a company's brand, boost a marketing campaign. You can create a marketing campaign and you can stay on top of new trends if you follow them because you can follow those hashtags. Instagram is an optimal five to nine hashtags. Facebook and Twitter are optimal three to four. Using your business name, location, topic, or your posts are general rules of thumb when it comes to hashtags. Are customers in your area even aware you exist? If you're not promoting those in your local area, 
there's an opportunity for your competitor to do so. So if you're a brand new company or a company that's been around for many years, it's important to ensure you have local business awareness. Make sure you run local business awareness ads on social media on a regular basis. And if you have under 500 likes on your Facebook page, Facebook isn't organically going to show your page in the search results. You've got to get your numbers up over $500 for that to happen. So spending as little as $30 a month can help to grow your business and create awareness. Remember I said social media is almost free. Spending a little bit of money doing ads does go a long way. And don't forget to invite your friends from your personal page to your business page. Canva is a amazing opportunity for you to turn your ideas into beautiful creations. You don't have to be a graphic designer. We recommend this to our clients all the time. There's an entry level uh, free um, subscription. A pro version is only under $20 a month and includes all these images. You can make videos, you can templates, there's uh, design school, there's stock photos, it's easy to use. Um, you can make presentations, you can do your marketing materials, you can do your business cards, you can do pretty much anything in Canva and, and, and the templates are already there, especially for social media. So you, you chose an, an Instagram post, you can resize posts, you can make your Facebook covers. There's a lot that you can do in Canva. Stock photos. You should be using your own photos, but in between, you can use some stock photos. So you could use a combination of both, but stay away from images that are too stock-like and look for ones that are realistic. Uh, biggest mistake is when people use a stock photo that doesn't A, relate to their products or services or something's off in the photo. Set a goal. If you're going to do your own social media, which is tough, set aside six hours a month to plan and design your posts. I highly recommend you take the time to do this. You should post at least twice a week. Take some free courses. Canva has free courses in their design school, many free courses on social media and best practices. Um, Hootsuite has courses, Agora Pulse has courses, Social Media School has courses. There's tons, uh, the Shaw Academy has courses. Um, Lynda.com, if you've got a library card, you can get, there's free courses. Now you've done all this, but analyze your results. All platforms have your results. Look at the ads you ran. Were they successful? Do you maybe need to tweak a strategy? Maybe the days of the week you're posting need to be changed or the time of day. Maybe your audience responds better to certain types of content versus others. And overall, make sure you have fun. It is a lot of work and you should be focusing on your business, but this really is an avenue of, of your business that you can't disregard. And with that, that is all I have. Thank you so much for taking the time today. It's just been an extreme pleasure to once again present. And if you have any questions at all, please reach out to us and we'd be more than happy to answer your questions. Thank you so much.